Thank you. Good evening again, Stonecrest. Welcome to this 7 o'clock meeting. At this time, we'll have a roll call from our city clerk, Sison. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Mayor Jasmine Cobble. Present. Council Member Tara Graves. Council Member Rob Turner. Here. Mayor Pro Tem George Turner. Here. Council Member Tammy Grimes. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. This meeting is officially called to order. There are three items on the agenda. Uh, the first item is the development of a rental housing uh, policies for single family homes. That will be by Attorney uh, Winston Denmark. And the second item is analysis of legal non conforming use zoning. Uh, and the third item is analysis of TMOD 2022 001. In the interest of time, uh, these last two items will not be heard this evening, although uh, planning and zoning will be greatly impacted by uh, the first item. We're asking that you stay with us and help us out with that one as we move along. Um, we are committed to a hard stop at 8 o'clock. So at this time, we're going to invite our City Attorney, Mr. Winston Denmark. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Let me see if I can get this presentation to actually work this time. Mayor and Council, thank you. Um, for your time this evening. We talked about this a little bit at the last uh, council meeting and the issue that we're facing, we being those of us who live in the city of Stonecrest um, and those of us who live in DeKalb County and in America is the proliferation of uh, companies that are investors that buy uh, residential properties um, in goal is not to have them owner occupied rather the goal is uh, to have these communities uh, these properties be for rent and they're building they're built uh, to rent which is a phenomenon that is relatively new uh, in recent uh, and it's uh, proliferating um, in our city and our county and this has been alarming to many because there are certain um, negative impacts of the for rent movement uh, and communities have thought of ways where they could address this. It has risen to um, proposed legislation at our General Assembly. Uh, but was taking it from the beginning, the uh, looking at what these issues uh, tend to be, large investment companies are purchasing homes in the suburban Southeast, that's Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina. And these are, you know, entire neighborhoods are being listed as for rent. Uh, last year, investors bought nearly one in seven homes sold in the nation's top metropolitan areas. Uh, investors have purchased a disproportionate number of homes in neighborhoods where the majority of residents are black. There was a, an article, a June 1, a 2022 article um, in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution entitled Investor-Owned Housing Merging as Key Issues uh, for Metro Atlanta Officials. And I'm going to, um, to read just a little bit from that article and provide a little bit of context. Uh, private equity firms and other large investment groups are gobbling up single-family neighborhoods across Atlanta's suburbs, and so far there's no clear solution in sight uh, for local officials. The article goes on to say that uh, those were the takeaways from Wednesday's Atlanta Regional Housing Forum where affordable housing advocates and local officials across the metro area heard from experts on the forces that have made Atlanta's housing affordability challenges among the worst in the country. A study by the real estate firm Redfin found that 33% of home sales in the fourth quarter of 2021 were bought by investment groups rather than individuals, making Atlanta the number one metro area in the country for investor purchases. Local officials in Cobb County and College Park said they have seen more developers uh, 
entering build to rent agreements in which they build entire subdivisions with an agreement to sell the homes to an investment firm for rent. They are squeezing out those who hope to, to become home buyers. Uh, Bill Bowling, moderator for the event, said of large investment groups. So this is a problem um, that's especially pronounced uh, in Atlanta uh, and, and, in the, uh, and in the city of Stonecrest uh, as well. Uh, investor activity is especially pronounced in the suburbs surrounding Atlanta and African-American neighborhoods are targeted more than white ones, exacerbating existing racial gaps uh, in home ownership. So looking at our community uh, in particular, uh, we see that Last year, 30% of home sales in majority black neighborhoods across the nation were sold to investors compared with only 12% in other zip codes. In the city of Stonecrest, 53% of homes in the 30058 zip code were bought by investors. In our other zip code, the 30038, um, we don't yet have sufficient data uh, to provide an analysis. So this is more than just an abstract issue uh, in the metro area, it impacts the Atlanta region generally and the city of Stonecrest uh, in particular. Uh, we see uh, some examples of some of these companies that you may have heard of. Uh, Progress Residential, uh, American Homes for Rent, Invitation Homes, just to name a few. Well, how have, sorry, presentation is, how have uh, investors uh, gone about their business in terms of purchasing these homes. Well, we see, which all of us may have gotten at some point or another, unsolicited phone calls, um, unsolicited text messages. Th th that's the one that really bothers me. Um, they, 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 they're, they're texting me. Um, and so they have, um, uh, they canvass the National Association of, of Realtors uh, multiple listing service and leverage relationships with management companies. The investor rush is partially to blame for the fast rising home prices that are forcing uh, many first time uh, lower income buyers out of the market. And so uh, with these calls, uh, and they have flyers that they uh, place in your mailbox, tape them to your front door, uh, you get off the interstate and they have signs uh, posted everywhere. And so in predominantly African American communities, this is something that we see uh, a lot uh, regrettably um, because not just in Atlanta and Stonecrest but nationwide African American communities are, are being targeted. Uh, some neighborhoods uh, are being turned into um, uh, rental campuses uh, as opposed to maintaining the, the residential character of the neighborhoods. Um, but what are some of the other concerns uh, that we are seeing as a result uh, of this? Well, we're seeing unwanted neighborhood activity associated with renters. Uh, you're seeing noise, uh, crime, and, and violence. It has a negative impact on property values in these communities. And as I said earlier, it's the decline in the residential character of the communities. It's becoming more uh, transient, uh, whereas opposed to people who are when they're owner-occupied, they have some investment, some skin in the game. This is my home, uh, and, and people treat it as their home. I always use the example of uh, when I, I'm in a rental car versus my car. When I'm in a rental car, I don't avoid them potholes uh, like when I'm in that five series, you know, because I, you know, I, 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 you know, I, it ain't my car. So, and, and so, if, and if people are going to treat their homes, your neighborhood, like they're driving a rental car, they leave trash in it. They, that, that's that's what we are, are going to get. And so, and they don't have an incentive uh, to, to improve the properties or to maintain the properties. I know during the pandemic, a lot of us were at home, and I know if you all are like me, I saw everything wrong with my house while I was home. And so, um, and so I, my wife and I, we, we did a number of home improvement projects because that's our home, that's where we live. We have some skin in the game. We want to 
maintain our property and improve our property, well, a renter doesn't have that same incentive. So if you're living next door to uh, an individual like that, um, you're trying to improve your home, your lawn, beautify, and they don't have that exact same uh, incentive. Um, so homeowners associations have tried to respond. Local governments have tried to respond. Homeowners associations have tried to adopt rules requiring owner to live in a house for a year before renting it out. They've also put a limit on the percentage of houses in a particular subdivision that can be rented at any time. Uh, they want to require, in some cases, leases to be approved by the homeowners association board, which can reject those leases based on uh, investigative backgrounds and other reports. Um, those are about as controversial as they sound because people definitely, definitely want to push back uh, against those. And some of the arguments against it is that similar, these kind of restrictions make housing less affordable. Um, the, the real estate companies, the investors largely say that creating these rental properties allow other individuals to live in a house where they probably couldn't otherwise. They also claim that uh, restrictions on renters is discriminatory. They argue that millennials are more reluctant to make long-term commitments. They find it more attractive to live in subdivisions where they don't have to worry about upkeep, taxes, and other aspects of traditional home ownership. Well, I certainly agree with that. They don't want to worry about upkeep, and they don't. And so they hail that as a negative for these types of regulations, but I certainly see it as a positive because we want people to have to worry about upkeep. Now, the local government response the, Atlanta, the city of Atlanta and Mayor Dickens has uh, declared his support for the Community Reinvestment Act. And this is an act that requires the Federal Reserve and other federal banking regulators to encourage financial institutions to help meet uh, the credit needs of the, needs of the communities in which they do business, including low to moderate income neighborhoods. I mean, that's fine, but that doesn't really have a lot of teeth to it. Uh, but the Cherokee County Ordinance, which we talked about the last time, did. And I'll talk about the Cherokee County Ordinance uh, in a minute in, in a little bit more detail. Um, other measures could come in the form of zoning ordinances. Uh, cities could implement conditions on approval of uh, zoning stating that um, all homes be owner-occupied or provide that only a certain number of homes can be for rent. Now, I'm looking specifically at the Cherokee County Ordinance, and I brought the ordinance with me this evening, and I'm going to kind of go through some of its provisions uh, rel relatively briefly. Uh, this ordinance was adopted by Cherokee County uh, in February uh, of 2022, in February of this year. Uh, and this is um, shortly after uh, the bill that I'm going to talk about in the General Assembly, House Bill 1093, uh, was adopted. So Cherokee County was probably working on this uh, as the General Assembly uh, was uh, the state council was probably drafting uh, the bill uh, that they considered. Uh, it was an amendment to the Cherokee County Zoning Ordinance. And the first thing they did was to kind of define certain uh, categories uh, or terms, for rent, for rent community, for sale, for sale community. Uh, for rent is uh, defined as constructed for the express purpose and intent of offering to the general public for lease and not intended for sale. By contrast, a for sale community, excuse me, for sale is, is defined as instructed for the express purpose and intent of offering to the general public uh, for purchase. Now, a for rent community is defined as a residential subdivision or development with no more than 10% of the dwellings therein occupied or intended to be occupied by tenants uh, rather than owners. So they first set out to define what we're talking about in terms of what is for rent, what is a for rent community, what is for sale, what is a for sale community. Uh, then uh, they place certain restrictions on where for rent communities and for sale communities can be. For instance, I'll pick one in, 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 uh, by way of example. Single family residential district, that's their RD3 classification. Uh, the purpose of this residential district is to permit and encourage development of high-density for-sale 
or for rent single family residential uses. So they are going to permit it in certain areas. So it was not an out and route out ban uh, in Cherokee County. Uh, but uh, they say that um, in terms of the conditions, a proposed site plan must be submitted to planning and zoning for review and comment prior to RD3 zoning request. Here's the rub. The applicant shall state whether the units in the proposed project will be constructed for sale or for rent or a combination thereof. Now here's the teeth on for rent communities. For rent communities shall be permitted by right in the RD3, RM10, and RM16 zoning districts. For rent communities shall be permitted in the TND zoning district with the exception uh, with, with an exceptional variance. For rent communities shall be prohibited in any district where the use is not permitted by right. So they gave ground. They didn't all out and out prohibit for rent communities in Cherokee County. They permitted them in certain districts, but they said if it's not permitted in that district by right, it's prohibited. And so they, I'm sure, cherry picked their community and said, we can suffer it to be so over there, but if it's not permitted as a matter of right over there or in these specific uh, zoning classifications, they are prohibited. And no one has sued Cherokee County on this ordinance yet, um, not as far as I know, and I know the lawyers who drafted it, uh, and I've told them to let me know if they get sued because I will follow that very closely. But this is an example of a community that said, we're going to just do something and pass something that protects our community and limits where these four rent communities can be. Others would have taken the approach of let's just ban them all together, and that may be a, uh, an approach that we consider, or we may take a more measured approach like Cherokee County and say we, we have a better chance of our ordinance passing legal muster if we permit it somewhere, but then hold the line elsewhere. And we can cherry pick our community the same way and say it could be over there but not over here. So the, the, the Cherokee County Ordinance is something that I, um, and I, and I intended to send copies to all of you and I, and I certainly will. So the enlightened folks at the Georgia General Assembly ha have looked at this uh, as well. Um, House Bill 1093 uh, was introduced in, on February 10th, uh, uh, 2022. Uh, you, you remember that the Cherokee County Ordinance was adopted February 15th. Uh, but House Bill uh, 1093 with its companion bill, Senate Bill 494, would prohibit local governments from any kind of regulation of so-called build-to-lease dwellings, which are single-family homes which have been built specifically to be rented or leased, not to be purchased uh, by their occupants. So the General Assembly is trying to do an end run on what Cherokee County has already done and what communities like the city of Stonecrest may be considering. And so they're going to try to beat us to the punch. I believe that if the General Assembly um, adopts uh, something like House Bill 1093, and this died in committee, so this didn't, was not enacted last session, but had it been enacted, it would have dwarfed and, and superseded uh, the Cherokee County ordinance, would have invalidated it. Um, there was another article in the AJC uh, in February, uh, February 17th, uh, 2022, uh, shortly after the bill was introduced on the 10th, uh, that discussed uh, this bill. Um, and, and here's uh, uh, what, it, what it had to say. A bill before the Georgia legislature would remove obstacles for companies that want to build homes that they plan to rent. House Bill 1093 would, in large part, prohibit municipalities from regulating build to lease development projects. Quote, if you own a piece of real estate, you have the right to develop it and make money from it, Georgia State Rep uh, Dale Washburn, a sponsor of the measure, said during a Thursday hearing before the House Judiciary Committee. This is build to lease. This is simply the free market at work. And that's, that's the argument that a lot of people make. Um, the marketplace is driving this in the big companies are responding to a demand in the market. That's a certain point of view. Others point out that 
if you build it, they will come. They create the, create the market based on the, what's profitable for them, and then they convince others that this is the way to go. So it's not necessarily um, the marketplace dictating this, but rather the moneyed interest dictating this. If you own, I'm sorry, the local government, he said, should not be able to say, we want this area to be single family homes for purchase only. Uh, the bill is backed by a coalition that calls itself Georgians for Quality Housing Options. Translation, the moneyed interest. Uh, state Rep. Bonnie Rich said she was uneasy with the idea of a statewide measure that would tie the hands of local officials. If these are so great for the community, she said, why don't you just get the communities to approve them? Um, translation, let's have local control and let people in these local communities dictate what's best for their communities as opposed to the General Assembly coming in with a heavy hand telling everybody um, you know, from North Georgia to South Georgia, every place in between, a cookie cutter, one size fits all, you shall not regulate this thing. And so we think that is problematic as well. As I indicated that uh, House Bill 1093 uh, died in committee uh, and so uh, it did not uh, pass but you can bet your bottom dollar that they'll be back uh, next session to try again uh, because this phenomenon is not uh, going away. So here in the city of Stonecrest, a couple of options presents itself. Uh, first and foremost, we can rely on the legislative efforts of our friends at GMA, uh, the Georgia Municipal Association. Uh, they resisted House Bill 1093 last session, uh, and uh, I know Rushi Patel uh, their general counsel, we've known him for a number of years, uh, and he assures me that they will fight it again next session if it comes back. Um, so we can stand pat and let GMA fight our fight for us. We also could take a different approach, more proactive, and engage our own lobbyists. And I know this body has in the past considered uh, a legislative um, agenda, uh, a lobbyist to promote uh, our interests uh, with the folks under the gold dome. So now we would work in tandem and in concert with our friends at GMA, but we'd be more aggressive and proactive uh, in trying to get legislative is legislation passed. Uh, the third option, and none of these are mutually exclusive, uh, is to enact our own ordinance, uh, modeled after what Cherokee County did. And say for our community, for Stonecrest, we are going to limit at least, if not out and out prohibit, build to lease developments here. Uh, like I said before, uh, this has not been challenged in court yet, and so we don't know the outcome. Uh, but so there's a potential court challenge to the, to the legal viability of such an ordinance, uh, and then there's the possibility that we could get trumped by the General Assembly if they get something like House Bill 1093 through in the next session. So those are kind of the pitfalls um, that, that face us, and so the choice is to do something or to do nothing. I think you know what my vote would be if I had a vote, uh, but uh, you good folks were elected to make that decision, not me. Um, does anyone answer any questions? Mr. Denmark, uh, let's do one thing up front. Uh, someone posted that you were proposing uh, to create something to allow rental housing. And I had to defend you, sir, so I'm going to give you an opportunity to defend yourself. Sir, I appreciate it. I appreciate your defense, but I, I, I can handle me. No, but absolutely not. We, we, we certainly, I, I don't get to necessarily advocate for particular outcomes. I, I always tell people nobody ever elected me to anything. So I'm, 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 I'm an advice giver, and you good folks are decision makers. And so my advice, um, when solicited, uh, would be to uh, put up barriers to rent uh, to own developments in, in communities. Uh, I've said it many times, I, I don't just represent the city of Stonecrest, I live here. So this is, this is my neighborhood, this is my community, this is my city. So citizen Denmark does not like um, rent um, to, to um, you know, the kind of the, these rental communities and attorney Denmark uh, advises against them as well. So if someone got the impression that I was advocating for these investment companies that build these rent-only subdivisions, well, they are sorely mistaken. All right. Uh, let me uh, do some comparison. 
Uh, Mr. White, we're going to put you to work, sir. Uh, you, you, you mind coming? Will you introduce yourself first of all? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Ray White. I am the director of planning and zoning. I, um, I hail from New Jersey, North New Jersey, uh, where I went to uh, undergrad school, um, actually in Western New Jersey, came to Georgia um, at Georgia Tech in 75 for a master's degree, which I did in 77, back to New Jersey for a short stint and came back to Fulton County, which is where I did my internship. I worked for Fulton County for about three years and was then asked to come and work in the private sector. So I worked for three years also in Johnson, an engineering architectural planning firm, large one in Southeast at the time. And then left there for Oglethorpe Power Corporation, which I did analysis for substations and route uh, lines, transmission lines around the state of Georgia. I then left there and came to DeKalb County um, as economic development manager. Um, and that was in like in 82 and um, stayed for eight years as economic development manager, and then um, I was promoted to the directorship uh, for planning in DeKalb County for 13 years of pre-administration from the Lou Leviton Jones administration. Good, um, and that's, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead and finish. And then, of course, I just um, decided that I would uh, early retire and went back to Georgia Tech and, and pursued and finished the PhD in 2016 and went into the private sector to do consulting, and here I am now. Welcome aboard. Now, here's the question. Yes, sir. <laughs> DeKalb County, I'm sure, has faced this same question. Are you familiar with uh, rental communities in unincorporated DeKalb that you can share with us? Well, I could say that, um, you know, I was there in DeKalb for a very long time, right? And, and um, as you might know, um, DeKalb, uh, had a housing stock that was very varied. Um, the uh, early commissioners did not like uh, apartments or multifamily housing and sought to move remove a lot of it from the zoning ordinance, uh, or I should say the comprehensive plan. Um, the net of it is that um, when you think about rental housing, one, in my view, needs to think about the um, perspective of what we saw when we start to um, actually move into housing market um, as young people. We tend to look to a to rental uh, situation, the leasing, because that's a viable and, and option for us. Um, so I'm not against the idea of rental uh, situations. I think it's important uh, first step in housing ownership in many respects. However, um, we're dealing with something that I think is a manifestation of the economic growth and times and competitiveness in the marketplace in America, and that is corporations are buying out uh, single-family homes and subdivisions. It's an unheard of, and this, of course, is a threat to uh, the viability of neighborhoods. Um, I have people in a position of home ownership because that's where people actually invest the largest investment in large cases. Um, and this is where we're accustomed to having um, the equity in our community built. So um, to have a corporation buying out neighborhoods, and I can attest to the fact that even the development that I live in right now has had that happen. Um, so um, what they did is what we heard just moments ago from the attorney. That is, they basically decided um, that the homeowner association would hire legal representation and basically decide on how to limit the number of units that had been um, to be bought out, essentially. And we heard, and I won't repeat that, but we heard some of the options uh, that were made here. So yes, I'm in favor of some measure of control, but this is a free enterprise system and profit-oriented. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean, mean to cut you off, but um, I was trying to feel for this. the Cap County have anything in place to address this issue at all? Well, I don't exactly know um, what the Cab County is doing today. I mean, the, the actual, I did uh, work as a consultant most recently in the Cab um, in the, in the uh, permit analysis aspect. Um, so what we were looking at is 
um, a lot of activity that have taken place. And because of the recession and the uh, COVID-19, um, we had gotten backlog. Um, and so what we saw was that, you know, in order for uh, the county to move forward in terms of his revenue base and the like, he needed to help. And this is a situation where you're caught, where you're dealing with trying to assist the development community to move forward and at the same time control the way they're moving. So I'm not sure what the, uh, the uh, county policy-wise. Well, we're in a position there where we can, we have that connection so we can find out. Let me ask something of uh, Mr. Kedra Jackson. Ms. Jackson, if a subdivision were to have a desire a developer, a desire to turn a community into a rental community instead of a um, individual ownership, how would we get our first clue? Our first clue is our code. So Article 8 speaks on non-conforming lots. Um, there's a definition that states that um, when you're creating a non-conforming lot, it cannot be contiguous to another lot or it cannot be contiguous to the same owner. So we want to start there to see if the owner is creating that type of lot. If he or she is, then we want to make sure, is there a lot of record? If there's not a lot of record, then we need to consult with the attorneys to make sure that we're not creating a development that is not um, in sync with our zoning ordinance or our comprehensive plan. I'm going with our preliminary plat. Do the pre will, will they give us any clue, the uh, preliminary or the final plat? No. Nothing. So normally when, you, when you're when you creating a preliminary plat, you are insinuating that I am creating a fee simple development. Okay. okay. So that's the, that's the first clue. When, uh, when a planner is looking at a preliminary plat, I am under the assum assumption that you are creating a free s fee simple. Of course, you want to verify that with a developer if he or she confirms, which it has been confirmed before um, pre in previous uh, review, then we move forward. So we want to make sure that preliminary plat meets the um, minimum requirements for a preliminary plat before we bring it to this board. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Uh, I was just trying to get a feel, folks, for where we are now and how we can stand God for this type of activity coming to the city of Stonecrest. Meanwhile, we need to come up with a solution as to how we can um, best, I don't want to say protect ourselves, but uh, the citizens have expressed opposition to this type of development. And we need to put measures in place to respond to their concerns. So council, what are your uh, concerns? Mr. Benbog is at your disposal. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, this may be for oh. Ms. Jackson, and don't go too far, Attorney Denmark. Um, I'm going to ask you a, a very similar question that Mayor Pro Tem just asked. Um, in the application process, you were saying that our first indication that a developer is attempting to develop a rental-only community is through the preliminary plat. Right. So when a preliminary plat is introduced to staff, um, of course, that indicates to staff that the developer is wanting to subdivide that property. So, mm -hmm. of course, once you subdivide the property, what other measures are you putting in place? Are you putting in place HOA? Will these be fee simple? You know, different um, technical reviews go into that. And when you say fee simple, that is the indicator that is rental? No, that is the indicator that they will be owner, oh. owner occupied. Okay. Okay. So if fee simple doesn't exist in their application, then that's an indication that it's rental. But they don't necessarily have to verbatim state that it will be fee simple, but the prelim preliminary plat is an indication that these will be fee simple, a fee simple development. Okay. Is there anything in the process that's explicit that reveals to staff that it's a rental only um, community. I'm going to say no. So one, thank you, um, don't leave yet. <laughs> um, 
one light bulb suggestion that popped in my head was to add um, something in that preliminary review checklist that would require an explicit reveal that this is to intended to be a rental only community. That way staff is not having to try to decipher between all the other things of a process of elimination. Rather, it can be immediately revealed um, that it is, cons it is being developed with the intent to have a rental only facility. I mean, that may be at least a quick first step. Um, that's just a policy change not necessarily an ordinance or a text amendment change, but something that would help us identify that very quickly. Of course, that would need to be followed up with some kind of ordinance or resolution so you know what to do once that box is checked right? um, and have a, a, another set of steps um, that would maybe take you down a different path should that box not be checked. Um, but that would maybe lead us right into um, a solution to either something similar to what Cherokee County did or something um, different that's Stonecrest custom, but if we don't have today a, a checkbox in that process that reveals that immediately, that may be a quick first step into getting some our arms around how much of that is attempting to come to Stonecrest. That's just a quick suggestion. I do have a mayor pro tem um, think that we should seriously consider um, crafting um, what is to be a, a, a protection of sorts for us. I wanted us to come to that point after discussion from the council, but yes, absolutely, I agree with you. Yeah, I'm not sure um, if it was in a public meeting. Well, let me take that back. I'm sure it was <laughs> Cherokee County in a public meeting on um, passing that um, ordinance through public hearings and all that. Yeah, I'm curious on how they selected those uses, whether that was where their more urban use was, where their foot traffic was. So it was more appropriately suited, um, or rather that was on the outskirts of their city. I don't know their, their landscape well at all, um, but I'm curious on how they came up with those particular zoning um, areas to, to place that use, um, but definitely something worth looking into. Thank you. Anyone else? Mayor Pro Tem. Councilman Rob. A question for Attorney Denmark, and you might have mentioned it, Attorney, and I might have dismissed it. Uh, in reference to, if we put something in place, uh, against this move for this uh, House bill, and it's established and we put an ordinance, ordinance in place, can the state come back and override that ordinance? Yes, sir, they, they, the state could take action, uh, pass legislation that would invalidate our ordinance. Uh, and so we would, um, we're at the mercy of the state, it's, it's kind of like playing spades and they got the big joker, so I mean, they, they can, they always win. Uh, we can lobby them, I mean, they're, they are us, I mean, they are, our neighbors too, because we have elected representatives in the General Assembly and we can lobby the full body. But at the end of the day, if they pass something like House Bill uh, 1093, it would invalidate what Cherokee County did and what the city of Stonecrest might do. But if I may, just briefly, um, we, you may recall at the last meeting there was a gentleman they were trying to get his plant approved. And I, I did what I don't normally do, which is ask a question uh, with Mayor Pro Tem's indulgence. I asked him, are these going to be owner-occupied or for rent? He said, I don't know yet. And, and so uh, the answer is we don't have any clue uh, what they're going to do. Um, and we can't know uh, in, in the way our process currently is. And you will recall, I read from the Cherokee County Ordinance, as part of their development standards and, and requirements, they said a proposed site plan must be submitted to planning and zoning for review and comment prior to RD3 zoning requ rezoning request. The applicant shall state whether the units in the proposed project will be constructed for sale or for rent or a combination thereof. They make you say. They make you say. We don't make people say. And, and, and we, this caught us flat footed, so we didn't know to ask because this is a brand new thing. So nobody did anything wrong. We, we just, it's just a new phenomenon, and now we're trying to react to it. But Cherokee County makes them put their cards on the table and say what it is. And, 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 and if we were going to consider something, we need to make them say it as well. Thank you. Anyone else? Mayor Pro Tem. Councilwoman Grimes. Attorney Denmark, so just on that piece alone, what could make just that piece of making the applicant say, is there anything that would make that illegal or not enforceable 
if we adopted that. That's a really, really good point, Kyle, because you know, yeah, you're a councilman, right? <laughs> I get confused sometimes. All right. Yeah, th that is a good point. I don't think that anything would invalidate that, right? Because there's no prohibition on making them just declare. So you know, the General Assembly passed something like House Bill 1093. I think a declaration provision would survive that. But we're just saying, just tell us what you're going to do. I think we have a right to know and a right to ask, and that would survive anything that the General Assembly did. So, yeah, I'd say it's a good point. And so, to that end as well, I can't wait to hear more about the legally non-compliant. Compliant. So, I want to make sure that I have a full understanding. Thank you. Anyone else? And Council, I think we're at a point where we need to uh, give our attorney some ideas to the things that we want him to pursue. I know that there are a lot of options, and we might consider all of those options, uh, and we might want to prioritize some of those options. So um, we have about um, uh, nine minutes to uh, consider that, and uh, let's take some actions. Yeah. Mayor Pro Tem, I would definitely, um, recommend that um, we make changes to the application process, um, which I think we could probably do very quickly, make that enforceable to identify <laughs> whether or not a community um, will be considered rental, owner, or a hybrid of the two. I'm not sure that requires an ordinance um, or even a resolution, um, <clears throat> just maybe direction to staff to revise the checklist or your application process to include that measure. Um, and then maybe also um, assign a, a task to staff as well to begin to look at areas in Stonecrest um, where it would be best suited to <coughs> only allow the rental use in those areas. Um, just some preliminary research. The, the, the citizens may have a different point of view on that. Um, there may not be a single district who <laughs> wants their district to be deemed that place um, so, I made note SOV, and we had to do that with the sexually oriented businesses. Yeah, uh, we had to identify a place for which they could exist, and we have satisfied their right to exist. So the same thing can happen here. We satisfy their right to exist, but it may be in a particular zoning, um, and not a particular uh, location. But if you zone. R100, then you cannot exist there. R85, you cannot exist there. But R75, maybe. But I'm just saying, those are some of the options you can. So you're not totally prohibited. And I think you might stand a better chance of surviving a General Assembly challenge, uh, a legal challenge, if you don't totally prohibit it. But you limit where it can exist. OK, so those are some options. Uh, Anything else? Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem. Councilman Rob Tem. And again, this is to Attorney Denmark. Are there any type of restrictions with the owners of these properties? I know they're talking about the, the properties coming into place, but what kind of liability and responsibilities do these owners have to these properties that are coming into these communities? I mean, if something's going wrong, I mean, can they be fined uh, to the, uh, I guess, the nth degree of the law? What's the situation with them? Yes, sir. We, we, we would find ourselves in a similar position um, as we are with apartment complexes, right? I mean, these are rental units, uh, so to speak, and the property owner has a duty to repair and to maintain and to satisfy building codes and such. Um, and so, uh, you know, and some communities struggle with that when you have essentially slumlords and most of them are absentee because in a lot of these apartment complexes, it's some corporation out in California who actually owns it and trying to find a live human being who's responsible has been a challenge in many cases. And so we're gonna find that as well. Um, if somebody's not cutting the grass and the grass is a mile high, now who are we gonna cite? And the, the tenant says, I, I don't own this, I, I, I just rent here. You have to talk to the owner and, and where's that guy? So, I mean, so making sure that we have somebody who's accountable is, is important um, on these residential um, um, properties, whether they're apartments or uh, single family homes. Mayor Pro Tem. 
Councilwoman Grimes? I, I did have a constituent to reach out who really had some uh, good thoughts about just this very thing. And so, Attorney Denmark, with your permission, I'm going to forward um, her information to you, uh, which may at this time be absolutely on time. So look for an email. Forward it for me. And we spoke of having a summit on this subject, and uh, there will be other discussion on this, and uh, we'll find a way to get more public input because the public can bring a lot of, of value to this discussion. But we do need to act relatively fast on some of these items because the General Assembly is going in session in January, and we need to have our legislative agenda together about three or four months before then. So we need to start working on that right now to uh, put it together. But again, we'll make um, an opportunity for the public to have some input as well. Uh, you also mentioned uh, limits on how long you can own your home before it can be rented out and enforcing that. I think that would have to be with some cooperation from the lender. I know the lenders can prohibit um, you renting your house out before a certain period of time. Otherwise, there are penalties involved. So uh, I'm not sure that what we can get done in that area, but it might be something to take a look at. And um, if you just put a policy in place, it's going to be a matter of enforcement. That's why I say lenders can enforce, whereas uh, when we put things in place, we've got to have code enforcement readily available with the teeth to actually do something. And I also know that um, taxes, tax man has an, um, a hammer as well because they're taxed at different rate for the renters than for, well, the tax rate is the same. It's just that when you're an owner, you get certain uh, exemptions. And that makes a big difference. Now, the, I understand that there is one rental complex in the city of Stonecrest that we're aware of. I'll have to validate that before I expose it. But it's something that we need to take a close look at and monitor how it's being maintained. So, Ms. Jackson, I know, uh, and Mr. White now, you'll help us to identify any that already exists. I know of one, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. And, and if it's not validated, let's just hold it until we validate it. I was going to say it out loud. This oh, okay. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, right. just Councilman Rob Turner. That's one more question, and this is, in this is in reference to our city manager. I know many times that our city attorney has stated that we need to get a lobbyist in place to move forward with this. Where is the status of that? I know you did a presentation. Where are we in getting that established for the city? Uh, yes, we did the presentation, and one of the requests made from council on that particular evening was that we also do one for federal services. Um, the uh, draft that I presented to you related to uh, state lobbying, so we have researched and added some additional language in a presentation that we'll bring back to you um, with uh, some additional information about seeking both services and cost estimates for both. For Great, and we are looking at putting the lobbyists in place before the session for next Yes, the goal is to get it before January. Thank you. Council, you got two minutes to give uh, clear instruction to our city attorney as to what you want them to work on first. Well, Mayor Pro Tem? Yes, Councilwoman. Um, I just want to get some understanding. I know we mentioned if we ask the question during the application process, if they decide to make it fee simple or rental um, development, and they state it's going to be a fee simple, but once it's developed and they change their mind, what would be our stance at that point? Right now, we have no recourse. We can ask. Um, they don't have to be truthful or they can change their mind. And it's not in our ordinances presently that the um, for rent communities are prohibited at all or any particular zoning classification. So we can ask them, but, you know. So basically, we're just asking them to see if they're going to be truthful. Yeah, without a doubt, and, um, and I think they—I mean, if they—if we believe that they lied to us, I mean, I think we could probably do something. But if they legitimately change their mind based on market forces and so on and so forth, it, it would be difficult. It'd be difficult. Okay. So, um, instruction to the attorney is to uh, draft 
some legislation based on what he found in Cherokee County, which fits Stonecrest, and also to um, work with GMA to make sure that we are in position to lobby against any bills that might prohibit uh, the ability of cities to regulate these type of facilities, I mean, uh, homes, and to consider local legislation that uh, will only allow this to be in certain zoning. Those are three to get started with. Do we, <coughs> do you, I'm not, did we get that far? I don't think we did, but if we draft it, uh, let's not take any uh, real action on it, but to, to look at drafting that. And we'll take some official action at another meeting. Um, I agree. Just wanted to make sure that we didn't um, jump over what staff, what the planning and zoning staff need to do in order for the attorney to be able to prepare that type of document. Well, let's get started. And we will revisit this. This might be on the next agenda and the next agenda and the next agenda until we get Hopefully something in place because this is this is very, very important. Okay. Yeah, can, can we agree to give um, planning and zoning staff uh, direction to start to look at modifying the application process to add that, that reveal and then also identify what would be a reasonable, um, reasonably suited zoning change? Have a city manager. And it's 8 o'clock, folks, so uh, as soon as y'all are ready to stop, we can stop. Uh, yes, if if you could um, take that um, vote now, that gives us something to work with in terms of getting started on making those changes. You need a vote in a work session. Right, give us a quick motion. You can't work, vote that's in a right, work. That's right. This is a work session. Work session. We left, that's right. Yeah. We left the meeting. Okay. Well, but, but we can get started with that. I think without a vote, we understand. All right, I'll get it on the next so agenda we so we can vote. If we need to call a special meeting, we will. Just yeah. before the next work session. I don't know that oh. a vote is necessary. Yeah. yeah. Well, if, if it's necessary, and we'll talk about it between now and the work session on Monday, if we need to, we'll set aside five minutes for a special meeting just to vote on this. It's that important. Okay? Folks, I'll take a motion for adjournment. Did I leave someone in the middle of a sentence? Let that you off. It says all right. And I take a motion for adjournment. So moved. And Paula moved in second to adjourn this meeting. All in favor would signify by saying aye. Paula with District 1. Aye. District 2. Aye. District 4 is aye. District 5. Aye. Motion carried. You said you wanted to end at 8, and I apologize for being three minutes late. <laughs>